Bramboro back with some Grand Tactician Civil War. Union Campaign, Very Hard Difficulty, Elevated Aggression in version 1.07. Nathaniel Lyon commands our only force in the Trans-Mississippi. His few brigades don't have the most experienced troops, his commanders aren't very battle-tested, and his tiny artillery batteries have yet to enjoy benefits of the recent army-wide artillery reform. Nevertheless, Lyon has pressed on into Arkansas, intent on capturing both the fort and city of Fort Smith. Frank Gardner's rebels have come to deny him this prize. How will Lyon make out? Let's find out. Okay, let's have a quick look at Econ and Intel. We just crossed into May and I think we've got the May 1st uh, still available here on Economy. A minus, which has dropped. Still very good, but uh, yeah, 100 million in debt <laughs> last month. Uh, and that came from uh, quite a bit of unit recruitment. I bought tons, uh, I ordered tons of European, well, specifically British weapons, three different types in large batches. And uh, I think we started working on at least two, maybe three forts. So, did that, and of course, as uh, seen before, we're now working on the Tariff Act for our governmental budget. Recovery wealth is now, is still below average, but is now decreasing. And uh, there's the two forts. 658 million in exports, 1.7 in import. The percentage gap between exports and imports is actually increasing a little bit. 636 million, pretty big drop. Weapons, iron, and food for our shortages. Or the three most dire shortages. Intel. Okay, so they're going for a restrict cotton trade. I don't think I'm against that. And they have completed Confederate gunboats. I think that's a pretty low tier one. I think this one unlocks uh, cotton clad rams, which aren't terrible. And that kind of reinforces the idea I had earlier about going for ironclad monitors. Uh, may need them on the rivers too. I mean, cotton-clad rams. If if the Confederacy actually uses them, they'll just murder all my little scout boats, which is all I have on the Western rivers. No change to relations. They haven't recruited anybody in the last month. Started a few new ships, possibly cotton-clad rams. Uh, Seventy-five percent on their morale. They lost a couple of generals. Still in mostly defending his land which of course includes offensive operations within Confederate territory, which they have been doing. Speaking of ironclad monitors, how are we doing with these projects here? Yep, it's ready. Ironclad monitors, 3.5 million. I'm gonna go ahead and take that. Sucked up all my <laughs> it sucked up all my industry subsidy, or excuse me, military subsidy. And man, it's going to be forever before those Prussian weapons unlock. Okay, yeah. As a matter of fact, nothing is really close anywhere. I don't think we're going to be talking about projects for a while. Even the econ and the industry subsidies are still fairly low. That's the project. I don't want to forget. I should actually build some monitors. And here we go. I think about eight. So I have a few to spread around. And 
let's see how long those are going to take to build. If I remember correctly, monitors actually build surprisingly fast. Yeah, 131 days, which is uh, just a hair over four months. That's not bad. I think that's probably about the same as a frigate. Maybe even a little bit faster than a frigate. Okay, so May, June, July, August. So these will be ready by the end of summer. Hopefully the Confederate Navy doesn't do anything too crazy with ironclads before then. We know that CSS Virginia was last seen off Charleston in the Port Royal Squadron. Doesn't mean they're at Port Royal, but it, they're in a little squadron somewhere in this area. So the first thing is probably a couple of those uh, monitors, I'll just put them in the Charleston blockade. And then the other six, I don't know. If we haven't taken Fort Pillow by then, I may form a little fleet of some monitors at Cairo and come down and have them bombard Fort Pillow. Okay. Theaters, just a real quick review here. The, uh, Banks, with his one brigade, is still trying to rouse those three broken guys out of the ruins of Fort Hatteras over here. Army of the Potomac is still building forts and allowing 10th Corps to regain readiness near DC. This fort has been repaired at Winchester. And I don't think there's any Confederate forces that have been sighted uh, in the Shenandoah Valley. Army of the Kanawha. This is Cadwallader. He's got his supply depot uh, completed. However, and it's not Cadwallader's fault. <laughs> I, I forgot, you, you know, when you cross over into the valley, you're going to lose your telegraph. So I should have had him building a telegraph station as well. He started it now. They build fairly quick, though. That'll be 10 days. I don't want him to lose the telegraph connectivity coming over the, coming through the Cumberland Gap. Grant's still at Nashville. And the siege of Fort Henry continues. Nothing new there. And that brings us to Fort Smith, where Nathaniel Lyon had come down here, crossed over the Arkansas River, laid siege to Fort Smith. Fort Smith is the name of both the town and of the fort. And then these other Confederate armies came and got involved, and he is not in a good situation. Right? The... Uh, the needle is heavily in the Confederates' favor. However, this assault button is not grayed out. I have converted siege battles, including defending fort sieges, to tactical battles quite a few times, including that last battle at Fort Washington. I don't think I've ever done it while I was besieging a fort. We've got almost 12,000 men. The Confederates have about six. So I think the way to salvage this situation is to convert this into a tactical battle. It'll be pretty small. Uh, and we do already have one broken brigade and everyone else is merely stable so we are going to have a morale issue however he's only got a few brigades and basically if we count our cav we have four unbroken brigades and William Baldwin has one, well, that's a that's the garrison here. One, two, three unbroken brigades. So I think we're going to pitch in here and we're going to fight a small-scale tactical battle here at Fort Smith. Which I assume, if we win it, means that 
we capture the fort. I don't think I've ever actually done this before. Okay, we're on this everything is woods map. Defensive situation. Objective is down here. However, the Confederates are right here. Just on deployment, they're visible. Now, I could have just completely cheese this <laughs> and set up, you know, like some parapets right here within firing range and just immediately, eh, okay, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but I'm just right back here, kind of defending uh, on this slope down through this little saddle, you know, just behind this little saddle right here. Uh, one division on the left, one division on the right. And then I've got the cav over on this side because this was our one broken unit. He's not broken at the moment. He is unstable. However, notice down there at the bottom, unit started broken 30%. That's his cap. This is as high as he's ever going to be. The best we can hope for is that, you know, he... I don't, e I don't even know if I've ever even seen a black text uh, unstable instead of orange. So Sturgis's brigade is pretty shaky, and that's why I have the cav over here. And they're dismounted. Basically, I'm just going to use them like infantry. And hopefully he's able to come around over in here, provide some flanking fire uh, with his hall carbines, and... Uh, Let's move him up a little bit. And Sturgis's brigade is not an issue. Anyway, I think that's about all there is to it. I don't expect the artillery to be a factor. I, I put them right here just in case they're able to get a little sliver of fire down this, down the road. But their firing arcs uh, aren't particularly... Uh, encouraging for that. So really they're here just to kind of be out of the way and we'll get them reinforced. There we go. That We got a few skirms out and let's go. Oh, it's 1743. It... Why does this say April? Oh, because we originally initiated the siege of the fort on April 18th. I think is why the date is April 18th. Which is kind of bogus because these these troops, that little army of the north... Uh, I forgot the name of the army. Army of Arkansas. That little army had not joined by then. But okay. So I think we're going to have sunset here in just a few minutes, actually. Okay, it's the morning of day two. Confederates kind of bunching up over here. We've got an artillery battalion here, which has run into our skirms on the road. Let's go ahead and try to take care of this fella. Move the cab from this position back around, and Smith is going to take up a position about here. Move up on McCall's left flank. There's some horse artillery moving up. Some skirms to go contest that. Okay, this artillery battalion, Lewis, wavering. Hopefully that uh, unstable brigade doesn't get uh, engaged here. Also, there are more than 6,000 Confederates on the field. That number did not count the smaller Army of Arkansas, who came on the field overnight 
they've got about 9,000 men on the field. So it's, it's roughly even, especially considering we've got this unstable brigade. So the skirmisher should come help out against this horse artillery. Oop. Well, drove in Tyler's skirms. I don't think there's any way these guys are going to have any shots, but I am going to put no, no, party, yeah. And we'll go ahead and put uh, our wireds. These are wireds right here. Put them on counter battery. Twenty-five guns in McCall's battalion? What's up with that? I didn't think it was possible to have more than 16 in a full-size battalion, even with artillery reform. I can't get the... Or can horse artillery have more guns than that? And there's also more than 200, 200 strength, which is an estimate, but that is way bigger than a full-size horse artillery battalion should be. Maybe this has something to do with Cavalry Reform uh, 2, which is enables uh, horse artillery. If anyone has taken that project and knows the answer to that, uh, please drop a comment. I did not think that a battalion, either horse or regular artillery, could have this many guns. It does look like just regular smooth bores, though not Williams guns or anything like that. Now, are any of these guys Army of the West, Army of Arkansas? Okay, so elements of both of those little armies are here. There, there's no one back here marching around behind me to the objective. And I think this is the entirety of his infantry right here. I don't think there's anything unspotted back in here. Lewis Battalion uh, at least isn't broken anymore. They are recovering their morale. Call taking some losses here, and he's lost a fair number of his guns. Looks like, okay, there he goes. Okay, what's your next move, Johnny Red? I was bringing this artillery back up. Well, this is a detachment, no. Yeah, he's sending a detachment to get those guns. Lewis is still back here. How are we doing on ammo? Looks like we're doing okay. This may turn into just kind of a 
skirmisher detachment uh, struggle over these guns. A small detachment, he wasn't able to get all the guns. Only 60 men, 5 guns. Estimate. Good, bring these skirmishers over here. These guys are going to have to come in for ammo after this little exchange. Yeah, running low on ammo. Okay, in they go. Let's bring those guys back. Looks like there's another detachment coming out. It's not, nope, 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 I didn't. If I told you to do that, I didn't mean to. See, eventually he's, he's going to have to commit infantry to this. Okay. Next. So we can do this all day, and it plays into our favor. I don't think Seagull skirmishers are taking return fire. Okay. Those skirms are low on ammo to bring them back. I don't know if Johnny Rep's going to do anything now. He's not sending out any more detachments to try to grab more of these guns. <laughs> kind of using these as uh, skirmisher bait there. <laughs> Casualty is actually about even. 
350 to 277. Tiny bit higher percentage of his force than ours. But with the objective, I mean, this is in our favor. Just sent the uh, skirmishers up a little bit, right on this uh, little crest line here. Have them ping away at the infantry, who I think are rifle, they're just Springfield rifle muskets, but I think our skirms have them outranged. Maybe this will goad them into an attack on our position, or we'll just further degrade their morale and try to uh, instigate a overnight withdrawal. Because right now, with his three infantry brigades, he is not the least bit interested in uh, moving on my breastworks, and frankly, I don't blame him. I would send a detachment up, maybe grab those guns. You know what? What we can do. Get uh, the cab into loose order. They're not reacting to this at all. They're not even putting their own skirms out. They just totally have the uh, Confederate decision making flummoxed here. They don't know what to do, so they are doing nothing. We are going to run into ammo problems here soon. Yeah. Low. 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 Let's go ahead and pull Tyler's in now. Yeah, they have haul carbines, which are 350 yard. Even these carbines may have them outranged if they are smooth war armed infantry. Which, given what's happening here, they must be. Even if they just had reboards, those have a 400 yard range. It, less accuracy, but the same range as a Springfield rifle musket, they would be firing back. Yeah, our guys aren't even taking any casualties at all.
pull Seagulls guys back for ammo. I'm going to let Andrews just hang on here until Tyler's skirmishers are back up. He's taking a thousand casualties. I think this cab's going to come up here with his carbines to deliver some high rate of fire uh, fire on this Finnegan's Brigade. It'll break, and that'll probably be the end of it. Andrew's low, yeah. Pulled the wrong guys in, didn't I? Shit. <laughs> oh yeah, he's he's within range from this position. That was just going to be his jump off point, but uh, he can fire from there. Well, he needs to move up just a little bit. Not even responding, and this isn't skirms anymore. This is a brigade. I'm not responding to that either. Skirms are back uh, engaged. Taking several hundred casualties apiece in each of the three brigades here. The cab is running through ammo pretty quickly. And they're withdrawing. There you have it. Uh, 2,300 uh, casualties for Gardner. Almost all of it uh, infantry. However, he also lost all of his guns. We lost none of ours. We did take 500 casualties, however, I believe these were almost all attrition casualties overnight. I don't think we had very many combat casualties at all. So, and surprisingly, didn't quite, uh, didn't quite make the major. 
we were just uh, a couple tenths of a percentage point, I think, away, because this is uh, well over 20% of the Confederate force. In any case, these two armies should be retreating after this uh, as we come out onto the campaign map, and I think Fort Smith, the actual fort, uh, should be Union, and we should start capturing the city here momentarily. Right. Nobody captured, but 1350 uh, small arms and 24 artillery have been confiscated, and the Fort Smith garrison withdraws. So let's see what happens here. Like I said before, I've never actually done this, initiating a tactical battle from the besieging side. Okay, well, that doesn't look very blue. <laughs> For condition zero, though. And we go right back into a siege, apparently. But these armies are retreating. It just starts over. And they have a confident garrison. That doesn't seem quite right. Although it is a fort condition of zero with zero fort firepower, so maybe this will just resolve very quickly. One would hope. This really doesn't make any sense. Okay, they got their uh, Restrict Cotton Trade Act. I think it's an act passed. And these guys only retreated that far. They may come back and just join the siege again. Eighth Corps is not actually shown as in the siege. There we go. Does that make any difference? It shouldn't. Well, I mean, we already had the men in there. And they're coming right back. All right, well, this little thing at Fort Smith is a little uh, kind of WTF. <laughs> but looks like we have business elsewhere. Army of the Tennessee is once again engaged by the Missouri State Guard, apparently not reinforced, and only by 12, uh, 16,000 men to our about 36-ish thousand. I have a funny feeling that they may just withdraw at the beginning of the battle. Looks like Polk's command should be quite close enough to reinforce them, but apparently not. All right. Well, I think it'll make for a shorter than usual episode. However, if we go into this and we have a, another battle here, that would make for a longer than average episode. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the episode here. And we'll see what happens here between Sherman, well, it's really Grant, and uh, Sterling Price during the next episode. If you like what we're doing with the channel, if you like this content, then leave a like, leave a comment, maybe even subscribe. 
If you're new to the series or the channel and want to catch other episodes in this series that you may not have seen, uh, I'm linking the playlist here. At any rate, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it.